Hello Internet, I'm Guy. Uh, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I'm a home shop machinist. I like to make artworks and weird things and sometimes projects for other people. And uh, what you didn't know is over the last nine months, I've been getting into 3D printing. So on my left here, this is my Bamboo Labs A1, which is my first 3D printer. At $300, I thought, okay, I'll buy in. And then I got the AMS for it as well for another $150. And I have really enjoyed using this machine. I think I've got about 600 hours on it, mostly printing PLA, but also some of the other slightly more exotic plastics. And then I realized I wanted to be able to print ABS and nylon to do some industrial scale things. I wanted to make a funny little pair of pliers and some plumbing parts and some more durable outdoor rated things. So I ordered two months ago the Elegoo uh, Centauri Carbon fully enclosed printer. And this also is $300 right off the shelf. An incredible price for both of these machines. I'm really impressed with them. So I haven't fully unboxed this. I've just basically opened the box and got it set on the bench. I'm not gonna do an unboxing video. I'm not gonna do a review here. That's what everybody else has been doing. And I've watched dozens of them. So what I learned from watching other people's review videos and feedback videos about this machine is it needs, like all 3D printers, more stuff. I printed a whole bunch of things for this machine. And so over here on the table, I have preemptively built, while I was waiting for this machine to arrive, printed all these parts on my A1 that will now go on the Elego printer. So I'm gonna go through those as I install them on the Elego printer and explain what they are. And in the description below, I'll also give lists of the various 3D print files that you can download for the printer for all of the things that I'm doing here. So let's jump right in. So of course my first print is the requisite Benchy and it looks like it's going pretty well. This is in PLA which is just what I had available on a small spool left over. But it's printing really nicely and quickly and not a lot of vibration so I'm happy so far. So I'm pleased to see that I've got the latest revision of the light here. So I'm just turning that on and it looks like we put this little bar light up here, a little strip LED. I was thinking about adding my own, um, but I'll see if that's going to be sufficient for my needs. I've heard people talk about how loud this thing is, and if I turn on the auxiliary fan, that's really quite loud. It's almost as loud as, say, a hairdryer. And then the model fan, it's not as loud. That's the one up in the print head. But if they're both running, uh, it really adds up. So one of the first improvements I wanted to make was to put on bigger hinges that will allow this door to open all the way around here. So as you can see, I've printed a whole bunch of parts here and there will be a link in the description below for where I found these on, I think, Maker World. So let me go ahead and install that and I will show you what that looks like. Okay, so the first add-on is complete. I've added these hinges here, which allow the new clear acrylic door that I got as well to swing all the way around so it's out of the way. I didn't like the fact that the door would not open any further than this. And so now I can get full access without bumping into this door. And clear acrylic because then I can see in better and the visibility is great. I can watch what's going on without having to plow in a whole bunch of extra light. N not to say that the light isn't okay, it could be better, but I like the high visibility. I never saw the point of the smoked glass front door there and the top too. Two more valuable add-ons here. This is a poop chute, which the poop bucket will land on when I print it. And then this is a duct connector here for the vent. So I can slide that on right there. And then it just swoops right over to the window where I printed a, another uh, hose connector right there. And then on the outside, what I have is a dryer vent. So that fits in there. And this is all on uh, one inch foam. So I've got good insulation for the dead of winter when I'm sucking all those awful fumes out. So this works out pretty well. And I'm pretty pleased with that. I also ordered a couple of extra print heads, so I've got a 0.4 and a 0.2, and then I printed out this Elegoo branded uh, holder for all of those, so they just drop in right there and I can sit them wherever I want. I like to put those off in the corner of the bench somewhere because this is really not used very often. 
but I'm pleased with this design. This, someone came up with a good design here, but what I did, rather than mounting it to the side of the uh, machine, I just glued this onto some acrylic that I fabricated up, and then it can just stand wherever I want it. Since the Carbon doesn't have a good quality camera that you can watch on a phone app, I got a Blink Mini because I have a lot of these around the house for other reasons, including monitoring my Bamboo A1. I printed this um, so that I can now put the Blink camera in there, and then I made this by gluing and screwing this on to the acrylic front door. And that drops in right there, and I can get live video anytime I want from anywhere, just as if I had a Bamboo Handy app, which I've grown quite used to. Another addition, I've seen a lot of people complain about the way the filament flows through this tight radius here, so I printed this little part here. So let me get the tube out, and I will drop this in there. Okay, so I've got this little device installed, and I've got filament pushed right to here. So now you can clearly see, when you're pushing it in, how it goes in. Oh gosh, I've hit a kink right there. Ah, that's better. The transparency of the Bowden tube here is too opaque, and I've got a different brand here that is more translucent. So let's just look at some filament here. This is some beige filament. You can barely see that going in there, whereas you can absolutely see that going in there. I don't know whether you can see it clearly in the camera, but I can. Now, of course, the obvious thing to do to deal with this height is to put a riser in there, and I have printed one. So, of course, I had to build a riser plate here with adjustable vents here, so you can open the vents on all four sides, and, of course, you can just take the lid off and what a lot of people do, I think, is just leave the lid partway open for some of the materials, like PLA. Right now I'm heating it up for some ABS printing, so that'll just drop right in there. And I'm going to close all the vents here, just very carefully. So the other thing I did was do this uh, dry box conversion for our cereal box. So there's rollers in here, a uh, hygrometer, and also in there, a little packet of um, silica gel. So that sits right in there. Now if I want to put filament in here, I just open up the box, take this off, set the roll in here on there like that. I'll take the clip out of the way. Feed this through the Bowden tube adapter. This will now drop down on there, hopefully. There we go. So now you can see that this will pull right out of there. And I'm going to do a Bowden tube adapter from here into the uh, sensor right there. So this will feed right in there. I don't think it's a big deal for this to be floating through the air for a short while, but um, they have, I have the Bowden adapter for here, and I've got to figure out how to add it onto there. So then if I get a bit of a bind here, this will actually pull up against that too, so it'll just sit there very nicely. Okay, so here's the setup in the dry box, filament going through the tube, and I found the adapter that I printed for the sensor there, the runout sensor, so now I'm going to feed this all through before I connect it to the Bowden tube on the dry box here. So I'm loading it into the printer. This is the tedious thing that I'm not used to, having used the AMS for the bamboo labs. I just kind of set it on there and let it do its thing, so this is uh, a little annoying. So now you can see, hopefully, yeah, maybe, um, the tube will now push into the adapter on the dry box. And now I have this very short length right there, and everything should be ready to run in there. So here's a close-up of the part that is an adapter to bring a Bowden tube into the sensor here. So this little part is listed in the um, description below. It's just a, a very small part. And it just the Bowden adapter kind of presses on right here, fits over here. I'm going to actually glue this on because it's a little bit loose. But it works great to connect the Bowden tube over to the dryer box. So, of course, I had to print the requisite poop bin, which uh, they provide as a file on the, uh, the uh, thumb drive. 
This looks just like the printer, which I thought was very clever, and it will hang right on the bottom of the poop chute that I printed, which was an optional thing that I found on the online on printables, I believe. So this little keyhole uh, slots on the back there, you can see that. And there's some poops that I already landed on the floor. And yeah, it just kind of drops on there. I like that. And this machine doesn't produce a lot of poop because there isn't any M AMS yet. So, by the way, I really like these dental trays. You can buy uh, packs of 10 of these very affordably, and I use them for my tools, and I also use them for changing out my desiccant. For instance, this one is worn out. You can see it's kind of gone dark green, and it should be orange. So I can dump that out, and then put some fresh stuff in here. And, of course, you can see I'm storing my, fill my uh, desiccant in ball jars, which are hermetically sealed. Cover that up real quick, get this settled in there, and bayonet that on. That's ready to go into the filament dryer there. So then this gets poured into the old jar, which goes over to the house to get dehumidified in the microwave eventually. So I'm very carefully going to pour that in there. Neat and clean and easy peasy. Just lid on there. So eventually I build up about a half jar and take it over and microwave it to dry it. So that's all the add-ons I've done so far to the Centauri Carbon. I hope you found all this very helpful and maybe you'll consider downloading and installing some of these add-ons yourself on your own printer when and if you've got yours already. I know we've all been struggling and waiting for them to show up. So don't forget to give me a like and subscribe and maybe hit the notification bell if you want to know more about videos coming up. And I hope to see you in the next one.